In a 1.5 degree scenario, farmers will be losing about 5 to 10 percent of their yield. So even in the best case scenario, yield is going to be lost. That's why the climate crisis is really a climate emergency. And to build resilience, not only for larger farms, but also for the small farms, is really crucial. So focus on climate resilience in agriculture is one of the key things we need to discuss here. Now, when it comes to fertilizer, it's a major source of greenhouse gas emissions. And I know that Bayer is looking at alternative solutions. But how do you go about managing the transition um, but from using traditional fertilizers to some of these alternatives in such a way that you don't risk jeopardizing food supply? Well, the only way to do that is to heavily invest in innovation. The Haber-Bosch process with Goddard's traditional fertilizer is one of the most important chemical reactions in history. 40% of all food depends on it. So you can't just turn a switch. But I believe that with the advances in genomics, in the bio-revolution in general, we will find bio-based alternatives to what are today's fertilizers. And fertilizers today are about 4% of all carbon emissions. So solving that problem would be huge for decarbonization by mid-century. Matthias, it's very nice to see you. Let me just um, put your green hat on for one moment. The traffic light code, uh, thank you very much indeed, doing it metaphorically for us, I like that. Uh, in terms of these coalitions, are the Greens going to compromise on any of their very strong environmental principles to get into government? Absolutely. So what you will see when a government is built that everybody has to give. Um, the good news in Germany is that the Supreme Court has basically create very clear guardrails for what climate action should look like. So I don't believe that any of the coalition parties will have to compromise too much. But generally speaking, we can expect from a German government that there will be compromises across the three parties. Yeah, and look, I look at German energy and I'm fascinated by it. I find it one of the most contradictory and fascinating energy mixes in any country and let alone the powerhouse of Europe when you look at the gas dependency on Russia that Nord Stream 2 which is such a key principle by the way uh, of the Greens has been for a long time you look at the the coal situation which okay it's improving like uh, no one's going to deny that but it's still about a quarter of uh, German electricity produced by coal one of the dirtiest fuels on the planet Germany's got a real uh, resource problem and still dominated by hydrocarbons well, it is. I mean, the, the, the good news is that Germany at one point led the way, uh, way in introducing renewables, which are today the cheapest energy source. The real question for the German government will be, can they fully unlock the potential of offshore wind as well as of solar installations in Germany? And that's also where the Greens have to give, because the side that is more in favor of natural conservation often also is against installation of, uh, of wind capacity. and. Uh, in my book, there will be a lot of green electricity replacing most of the hydrocarbons, but it's a really steep climb for Germany.